hi guys welcome back to another video happy friday it's actually not friday it's sunday but yeah when this uploads it's gonna be friday so hi my name is Rhonda or rj if you are new here welcome if you're not new welcome back thank you for sticking around um this is a new series that i am doing on my channel i started it two episodes ago um, I just decided to combine two things that I love doing my makeup and true crime shows and do my makeup and speak about a show as I do it so since it was received very well because there are a lot of us out there that love true crime and we're not crazy so don't come for us um, I made a decision to make it a regular series on my channel that I'm starting and I'm going to upload them up upload these videos on Fridays so I haven't found came up with a catchy name for it yet because I was gonna do it on Tuesday I call it true crime Tuesday but then I was like no that's too cliche so maybe I don't need a name because I don't want to be corny and make and give it a name but anyway that's what this video is going to be so what I'm gonna start doing is I'm just gonna do my makeup go through the video I'm gonna try to remember to put what I'm using on the screen but maybe I will just because that would be a lot of distraction as you can see you know this is my thought process I think about stuff like this so I'm just going to list the items that I use down in the description box I think just the items that I use as well as the shades that I use link them in the description box that way we just focus on the story and that's that so um I look that I have I know very amateur I'm you know I'm trying to get into eyeshadow uh, that video should be up already and I will link it up in the iCards if you're interested in seeing how I got this simple look so let's just get into the video so today's video I'm gonna be talking about two serial killers from my home state Florida woo, woo, I don't know why I'm celebrating that no bring it down but <laughs> two serial killers they uh, their names are William Lindsay and Gerard Schaefer so we're going to talk about William Lindsay first because the episode that I watched and I will, also I will link the videos that I watched here on YouTube in the description box so you can watch them for yourself. The video that I watched about oh, my battery's dying. Mother. All right, so let's get into William first. So the video that I watched, it was from the perspective of one of his daughters. So I thought that was really interesting. I never, um, first of all, I never heard of either one of these guys before. So that's one reason why I wanted to do a video because I was just, you know, at, maybe I was at work. We're not saying whether I was or not. And I was watching, <laughs> and I was watching YouTube and I just happened to watch one video and it was about this guy, he was a serial killer and he was from Florida and it caught my eyebrow pencil is broken so I won't be using that one so and he was from Florida and I was like hmm never heard of this guy and then I happened to watch another video after that and it was another serial killer guy from Florida so I was like you know what we're just gonna combine these and put them together so I find an eyebrow pencil. So the first guy, William Lindsay, like I said, the video was told from the perspective of his daughter, whose name is Robin Lindsay. And it just starts in their childhood. I uh, had a total of her, her mom and him had a total of five children. And uh, Robin was a daddy's girl. And you know, daddy's girls, in your eyes, your daddy can do no wrong. You're his princess. That's just the way it goes. So coming up, their parents were toxic towards each other. They would always argue, always fight. And the mom was more of the argumentative one. She was an alcoholic. She was she was not a good mom basically she was standoffish she was like very cold towards her children but dad was more loving dad was you know dad was the the loving force with their kids he was angelic 
to the children. He seemed to be, he spent more time with them. He seemed to be the more stable parent in the household. So Robin favored her dad. So mom, they, there was a fight and it exploded and mom eventually left, but she came back and the fighting just continued. And what they would do, which is what a lot of toxic people do, is they use the children as pawns between the two of them. And I hate when parents do that. Like y'all have y'all have dysfunction. Why do you feel the need to involve your children in this dysfunction? Y'all need to figure out what's going on with yourselves and leave your kids out of it. But whatever. So this one time, the mom, she even had a gun and she threatened to shoot all the children because she was like, if, you know, if I can't take the kids with me, if I can't have, basically, if I can't have the kids, you won't either, dad. So in order to punish him, she was going to kill the kids, which is crazy. So then when that happened, the mom and dad, they fought and dad eventually took the gun soon after that mom ended up coming back and taking the kids without the dad knowing and she fled and she ended up she was hiding out in the okella national forest when she did that though taking the kids without the dad's permission she ended up losing custody of the children so when mom did that she like lost her credibility so she lost custody of all the kids so now Legally, the kids were with dad permanently, and Robin even said she felt kind of, she felt relieved. Like, hey, I don't have to worry about this crazy lady coming back to steal us anymore. And she was a daddy's girl anyway, so she was happy. So, they felt, she felt safe. She felt like life was just going to be great from now on. So... One day she recounts that they were headed somewhere. I can't remember where, but they were headed, the dad and all the kids, they were headed somewhere on this family outing. I think it was like to a amusement park or something. I don't know. But they were headed somewhere and the kids were in the back seat, you know, just being kids. And they were just carrying on and dad was like, you know, shut up. <laughs> but, you know, he was just trying to get them to settle down or whatever because they were just being kids and so riding along and you can imagine the chaos of kids in the back seat cutting up and you're driving and long story short dad ends up having a car accident he runs into something and uh, robin recalls when she wake when she comes back to that you know all, all of the kids have some sort of injury but Hers is not really that bad. She just ends up with a scrape. Dad had an injury, but mom claimed that the dad did this on purpose, that he was trying to kill the kids to get back at her or whatever. But dad insists that it was an accident, that he, I think he said he fell asleep or something like that. But I don't, I don't know. Like, I, 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 I don't know. I can't get with that. You fell asleep. But let's fast forward. Nothing ends up coming from it because dad says it was an accident. They never proved that he actually did it on purpose. So nothing ever comes from it. So dad ends up remarrying and he remarries basically this evil bitch. She was evil. She was, there's no way around it. She was mean because she would mistreat his children. She would uh, berate them, scold them. Like she was just mean, mean. Um, <laughs> and And this one day, the dad happened to walk in and Robin and the stepmom were, they were like getting into it and dad was kind of like, you know, what's this about? And it's because Robin said that she wanted to go out with her friends or something like that and the stepmom told her that she couldn't go. And dad was like, no, it's all right, she can go. And the stepmom said, no, she can't go. Why stepmom was being a hater and she didn't want Robin to go with her friends, it didn't stick. But when that happened, dad 
kind of flew into a violent rage and this was the first time that Robin recalls seeing her dad be violent and he was like what I say goes I said that she can go she can go and then he kind of like grabbed the stepmom and they kind of had like a little fight and then the stepmom runs out and he runs out behind the stepmom and the next time that Robin sees the stepmom she has like a bruise somewhere on her body um and so Robin was kind of like hmm that's odd so dad also begins to behave kind of weird like just strange in general he would disappear you know at odd times and this one time Robin and one of her sisters they were doing the laundry and a pair of his pants had like a lot of blood on it like obviously it was a lot of blood because she remembers it so vividly so they asked him about it and he was like oh I just cut my finger um <laughs> okay that doesn't make sense why would there be this much blood just from a cut finger dad that that's not that does not compute but he also would every so often like just about every year they would move and he would also change his vehicles a lot like randomly he would come home and he's gotten rid of his old vehicle and now he has a different one and of course this video is told from the hindsight perspective so in the in the video Robin is just looking back and seeing all the things that were actually red flags but she didn't think anything of it back then because it's like you don't expect your dad to be a serial killer you don't you don't think that there was this one time also Robin had gotten a little bit older and she had a boyfriend to come and pick her up and when the boyfriend came to pick her up dad came out and he was like oh I can I want to speak to you for a second so the boyfriend was like okay dad wants to speak to him privately and like back in the room so they go in the room and then when they come out the boyfriend has like this <laughs> strange look on his face so when they get in the car Robin asks him you know what what did he want to talk to you about what was that about something something to that effect and the boyfriend says that that the dad told him that if he steps out of line he'll kill him and Robin kind of laughs and she's like what but the boyfriend <laughs> obviously he knew that dad was serious he was not playing so he was like you could like the the reenactment you could see like the terror on the actor's face because dad was like if you step out of line I will kill you you will disappear and so the boy was scared <laughs> which I mean who who could blame him so progress in life dad continues to behave strange here and there but nothing that really raises an eyebrow so um stepmom ends up getting sick and I think she had cancer and she passes away when she passes away it kind of seems like dad gets a little stranger so now that she has passed away you know dad's behavior is just being it's just even more bizarre for example he comes over uh, to Robin's home and he's like oh I brought something for the kids and when he pulls it out of the bag it's like this blonde oh I got makeup in my hair it's like this blonde wig and Robin is like this is strange why would you bring a wig and he was like oh it's just for the kids to play dress up and the kids see it and you know the kids they don't know any better they're like oh cool and they play with it weird very weird <laughs> um, another time she recalls going to see her dad and he had 
like his bed outside and he had burned it and she was like what's going on with the with the bed dad and he was like oh I needed a new one so that's why I was get, I got rid of that one but you're getting rid of a bed you're getting a new bed why would you need to burn it I don't know you know but that's what dad did Robin felt that was strange fast forward dad comes over to Robin's again for dinner because every now and then they would um, have these have dad come over you know just spend time with the kids you know you know family stuff so this one particular night dad comes over and he's acting really weird he's like paranoid he's looking out the window he's just being noticeably strange so robin and her husband notice it and they're like you know they try to talk to him he's like oh no i'm fine i'm fine and robin said usually you know whenever he would come over he would always end up like spending the night and then the next morning get up and he would you know have breakfast with them and you know it was like a, a normal thing that's what they would do but this time in particular dad ended up leaving like when they woke up the next morning dad had was gone like a thief in the night so she found that to be weird went on about her business her and her husband they ended up going going out shopping or something like that and Robin's husband at the time he was like a part of the SWAT team that was in town and so when they were out on their little outing doing shopping or whatever they were doing he got a beep you know this was back in the day he got a he got a beep and so then he had to go and call in because of the beep so when he called when, when he went and make his call you know this was nothing out of norm because this will happen from time to time but he came back and he has this weird look on his face and Robin asks him what's up what's going on and he tells her that his commander had called him and said that they had just arrested his father-in-law and Robin is like this has to be you know some kind of mistake ain't no way you know no 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 <gasps> So what ended up happening was a young lady had taken a cab to, I'm assuming, to the dad's address. And then she came up missing or either her body was found, one of the two. And when I guess they put uh, information out about, you know, about her and her picture, a cab driver remembered, um taking her to the dad's address and was able to give the police that information and so then when they arrested dad I'm I think he he confessed I think he admitted to it like yeah you know it was me but I think he had committed this crime in North Carolina and so he's arrested there so after he's arrested there he was connected to five no wait 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 he was connected to some unsolved, they linked him to some unsolved similar cases in Florida where um, apparently um, sex workers, prostitutes, whatever you want to call them, were missing or found dead and apparently this was what dad did. He would go around and kill prostitutes. Which is what I noticed a lot of men serial killers do. Huh. So they ended up recovering the bodies of five women. And even though, you know, the police have linked these crimes to William, Robin is still in disbelief because, you know, it's your dad. This is someone that's raised you. This is someone you have known your whole life. Your daddy is not no killer. That's what you, that's what you would think, you know? She doesn't believe it until she hears her dad's confession. So she hears her dad's confession and it's like you have no choice. So dad confessed to killing over eight women or around eight women over, a, over the span of about a decade or so. One of the things that kind of was like, ee? was like the place that he would dump some of the bodies was like where he would take his children camping and fishing throughout their childhood. And that was just like, that was creepy. Creepy, creepy, creepy. William was convicted of four murders and sentenced to 30 years in 1999. 
and he died two years later in 2001 from cancer while he was in Florida State Prison. Uh, Robin kind of breaks up a little bit because it's obvious that she is having this or is having or had I don't know like where she is with her healing but this internal struggle struggle this internal struggle of she still loves her dad because once again to reiterate she was a daddy's girl when you're a daddy girl you think very highly of your dad so she still looks she had she obviously has this you know I still love my dad but she hates the fact that she loves her dad um even the the subtitle of the episode is I hate being a daddy's girl oh her perspective was that you know he was killing her mom over and over because he hated her mom so much he hated that her mom you know was alcoholic and she was just not a good woman you know so he was basically killing her mother over and over without actually killing her mother but I was reading some more on him and it was saying that I think his mom was like that as well she was an alcoholic and she was abusive towards him according to what I read and so some people speculate that he was killing his mom but I mean I this is what I don't get about serial killers and they say that oh this is from someone else this is this <clears throat> they're actually killing someone else over and over that's why they kill these innocent people why don't you just kill the person that you have the problem with why are you going out killing other people that didn't do anything to you that's what I don't get so as you can see I am finished with my makeup and I didn't get a chance to get over to our homeboy Gerard and Gerard he's a lot to unpack so I'm gonna do him next Friday but make sure that you tune in because you will not want to miss it Gerard was a mess so I'm just gonna read this really quickly it says that he terrorized st. Augustine Florida in the late 1980s and he admitted to seven sadistic slangs but may have been responsible for as many as 20 murders he was arrested December 29, 1996 in North Carolina. He, After he was arrested, he was then connected to at least seven, but maybe as many as 20 killings in four southern states. He was a native of Salt South St. Augustine, stunned the community by confessing to the highly publicized murder of Anita McQuaig in 1988. Before the trial was over, St. John's County would know he had been stalking his victims in in their midst for over a decade so he was well acquainted with drug dealers and prostitutes of Lincolnville and West Augustine Augustine having developed a fondness for both recreational drugs and deviant sex over the years he was orphaned in infancy and constantly received verbal abuse from his adoptive mother okay it was his adoptive mother according to this once again according to this source um creating a warped and violent psychosexual behavior behavioral pattern that resulted in more than one failed marriage and an alter ego that he called bad bill this this sadistic personality most often emerged when confronted by women about his sexual inadequacies Lindsay exhibited all the classic signs of potential potential serial killer including animal torture emotional detachment substance abuse and unpredictable violent outbursts followed by apparently genuine remorse impotent unless enraged his psychosis led him to commit six brutal murders in st. Augustine
tried something new this time. I took notes as I was watching the show. But as we progress, I want y'all to see my growth. Hopefully, I get better and better doing this. Hopefully, I don't get no worse. <laughs> Wait a minute. So anyway, I hope you guys enjoyed this video and the makeup. I really love how it turned out. And I will see y'all in the next video. Bye, guys.